Okay, so uh, this talk is about uh, withholding your money from utility companies. It's um, going to be in three sections. Uh, the first, sec first section is going to be about um, uh, what they're doing. Uh, second is going to be how we can withhold our money from, from these utility companies. And um, third is why we should be doing it. Okay? Um, let's go to get started. Get started. Um, so why are we paying for utilities? Um, back in the uh, 80s, Margaret Thatcher basically uh, made sure that um, all our utilities were sold off to into private hands. Um, but the reason why she did that was because uh, essentially things weren't working very well with the utility companies. You know, there were there were strikes, there were um, power cuts back in the 70s and stuff and so on, and. Uh, you know, she basically came along and said, well, we need to make these, these utility companies work like businesses. Do you, does anybody remember that? Yeah. Yeah? Um, now, <laughs> there's a, uh, a kind of trick that's been played on us over and over and over again. It's called Problem Reaction Solution. Its technical name is equally in dialectic. But Problem Reaction Solution sums it up better. What they do is they cause a problem and they blame somebody else for it. So in this case, it would be, you know, um, utility companies not working very well. They blame the unions, they, they blame lazy people, whatever. But they blame somebody else, and they wait for the public reaction. The public reacts with, somebody should do something. And all of a sudden, we get the government have the solution ready to present, and it just so happens to be the solution they wanted in the first place. Okay, they, they couldn't get it in in any other conventional way. That's a that's a trick, and that's what was played on us. They intentionally made the made the uh, the utilities inefficient and um, and badly run, and then came along with a solution. We got to privatise them. Okay, so so why is that a problem? You know, it sounds it sounds quite reasonable. The problem is. The resources that generate all these um, these uh, these utilities are ours. They're our resources, and um, essentially, um, <laughs> we're being sold those resources back to us. So they belong to us. But they're basically selling them back to us. Okay. Um, and essentially, yeah, the banks have been, uh, it's, it's basically the banks who, uh, who own these resources. Um, if you remember um, the, the big share um, option, you know, I think it was, was it, um, Bill said, somebody took, Bill? Sid. Sid, that's it. <laughs> yeah, tell Sid, you know, buy, buy your shares. You know, um, as it happens, it wasn't us who was buying all, all, all the shares. We, we got some crumbs off the, the big table. But it was essentially the banks that uh, own the control and interest in all of these. Okay. So here's uh, the analogy for, for this. Um, let's imagine you've got a lemon tree growing in your garden. Okay. And somebody comes along and says, uh, "Oh, I've seen some some of your lemons have fallen on the floor. Could I could I take those lemons?" And you say, "Yeah, fine. That's, yeah, go ahead." So that guy takes those lemons and makes lemonade and he sets up a little store on the side of the road and uh, he's selling lemonade. Now, do you expect to have to pay for lemonade? Does anybody expect to have to pay for lemonade in that situation? Yeah. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Okay, so if it was from your tree. Right, but yeah. where did he get the resources from? So what happens if you if you pay for your lemonade, what happens next time he comes round for lemons that fall down? What do you do? No, I'd say half, 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 half. Yeah, but you you have a, have a savings because they're your your resources. Yeah. yeah. Giving him the sugar. Yeah, he's he's paid on his idea. But without the lemons, yeah, he's got nothing. Yeah. And they're your lemons. Yeah. That's the point. But you've given them in good faith. It, it, well, You've given them in good faith, but you don't expect to have to pay for them because it's your resources you're choosing. And that's that's the analogy for the for the uh, utilities. Okay, um, yeah, they, they're your utilities, your your lemons. 
okay? And, and they're being sold back to you. In the case of utility companies, it's us who's doing the work, yeah? It's, it's people like you and me who's doing the work, you know, turning the resources into, into usable services. The banks who own them now are the middlemen. They don't do anything, okay? They, you know, they, they, they get the money in, cream off the profit, and um, you know, that's it. So the point is, they're your lemons, it's your resources, okay? So, that's what I've just, I just basically said that. So they're, they're basically selling it back to us at a massive profit, but it gets worse. So yeah, the utility companies basically collect twice the amount of the, of the bill um, without you actually knowing about it. Um, how do they do that? So, the UK has been in a, in a bankruptcy now for hundreds of years, from since the 1600s. Okay? And um, yeah, it's allowed to continue. There's a, in America it's called uh, Chapter 11, uh, Chapter 11 bankruptcy. We're in a kind of Chapter 11-like bankruptcy uh, where the company is allowed to continue uh, trading for the benefit of the creditors. But essentially, it's a bankruptcy. And in a bankruptcy, there's a, there's a rule that says, um, he who brings the liability must also bring the remedy. Kind of makes sense because uh, if um, you know, I owe you 10 pounds and there's no money, I've got to be able to pay you in some way. So you've got to come with, with a way for me to pay you if there's no money, okay? So what they do is they provide you with the remedy, but they don't tell you about it. <clears throat> so here's a, an electricity bill. Okay. Um, the top part here is the uh, is a statement. We're all kind of familiar with that. And the, the bottom part is what's known as the remittance slip. Okay. Um, so let's look at what a bill is. Okay. Now this is the uh, Bill of Exchange Act, 1882. You're not really meant to. Um, you don't really have to know too much about this. I'm just giving you this for, the, for a bit of background. Uh, if you can't read it, um, <clears throat> part two there, uh, section three, um, basically tells you, describes what a bill of exchange is. Bill of exchange is unconditional order in writing addressed by one person to another, signed by the person giving it, requiring the person to whom it's addressed to pay on demand or a, a fixed determin determinable time a sum certain in money or to the order of a specified person or to the bearer. So basically saying it's got to be signed, it's got to have a, an amount on it and a date. Um, and the second uh, part of that says that an instrument that does not comply with these conditions, no, I'll, there's a bit there but it doesn't matter, um, is not a bill of exchange. So if, if a, a bill of exchange doesn't have those elements then it's not a valid bill of exchange. So I'm going to go back to uh, the bill. Can you see where it's signed by anyone? It's, it's not a bill of exchange. It's, uh, it's a fraudulent bill. That's one, one part there. So um, I mentioned the, the bottom bit there was the uh, remittance. Oops. Okay. So let's see what a remittance is. So this is an extract from um, a legal dictionary. Again, you don't really have to know all this, I'm just uh, giving you a bit of background. Um, a remittance is money sent by one person to another, either in specie, bill of exchange, check or otherwise. So a remittance is actually money. And that kind of looks like a check, doesn't it? She says, checks payable at post, post offices. That's because it is a check. But when they send it to you, it's not valid because it's not filled in, hasn't, hasn't got um, the amount written, it hasn't got, uh, it's not signed by anyone, it's not dated. So when they send it to you, it's not a valid remittance or type of money. But when you fill that in and you send it back, guess what? 
it becomes a, a, a valid species of money. But obviously they don't tell you about that. What they do, when you um, send your check in with the, uh, with the remittance, they take the remittance and they apply that against your, your bill. They zero your bill with the remittance. They take your, your check and they, they take it as an administration fee. So they're double dipping. And this is, uh, this is why they're double dipping. Here's uh, uh, a section from The Guardian. British gas profits up 24%. Yeah, this was the uh, first quarter of this year. Okay, 24% profit. This is the second quarter of this year. British, British gas increases their, their, their gas uh, bills, uh, I think it's by 18%. Can't remember what it says there. Uh, oh, 18, uh, between 18 and 16%. So, does that make sense? They make a massive profit uh, increase um, in the first quarter of the year, and the second quarter they're, they're raising their prices. So, it make it sense to anybody. No. But, you know, think about it. How are they making so much profit anyway? You know, back when we owned these utilities, you know, we own them, no, nobody was profiting from it. Any profit that came came out of it will be ploughed back into the business, or business, into the uh, into the utilities. So <laughs> they're making all these profit and it's just being creamed off. Right, so yeah, time for me to shut up and uh, <laughs> let you guys ask any questions. Yeah? You talk about the emissions, how do you pay my direct debit because you're not actually signing and doing anything physically. Well, yeah, that's, uh, they lose out there that way, but but in that way, um, by get, getting it through uh, direct debit, they're, they're ensured that they're going to get the money off of you. Yeah, yeah but they, they always encourage direct debit, didn't they? So I always offer a discount. I was like, 10% discount if you pay by direct debit. Yeah, like that. but for them also, it's, it's uh, very attractive for them to be able to reach into your account whenever they need to. Yeah, whenever they... Uh, you know, it, it, there's no way that you can pay late, yeah? yeah? And, uh, you know, late paying, I don't like that. Yeah. Okay, any any other questions? What resources does it um, does it cover? All your taxes. And I mean, including um, like some phone providers, uh, mobile phone providers, you know, now, um, I wouldn't um, suggest to do to do uh, mobile phone or anything because um, they're not really utilities. For one thing, um, and second of all, it's it's kind of uh, uh, an artificial thing because they can just switch that off, and you're not in you know um, you know it's not something that we owned before. Um, you know, it's something they can just switch off, and you know you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot. Water, sewage, and um, uh, you know, gas. Council tax. Council tax is another, um, another issue. And uh, actually, my next, uh, you know, if I do the next talk, it will be about council tax.